As I sat there in silence, I suddenly heard a faint but distinct voice. It seemed to be coming from deep within me, almost like a distant memory that had been buried for years. I strained to listen, trying to make out the words. It was a whisper, a plea for me to pay attention. At first, I wasn't sure what to make of it. Was I going crazy? But the more I listened, the more the voice began to make sense. It was as if it was speaking directly to my soul, urging me to take action. The voice was gentle, yet strong. It had a presence that I could not ignore, and it was getting louder by the second. I felt compelled to obey, as if I had no choice in the matter. It was a feeling unlike any other. A sense of purpose that I had never experienced before. As the voice continued to speak, I realized that it was my inner voice, the part of me that I had long ignored. It was the voice of my intuition, my instincts, my inner knowing, and it was trying to guide me towards my true path. I began to pay attention to my inner voice more and more, trusting its guidance and following its lead. And as I did, my life began to change in profound ways. I found myself making choices that felt right, even if they didn't make sense on paper. I began to trust myself more, and to let go of the fear and doubt that had held me back for so long. In the end, I realized that our inner voice is one of the most powerful tools we have. It is the compass that can guide us towards our true purpose, our deepest desires and our greatest potential. All we have to do is listen. As I continued to listen to my inner voice, I found myself embarking on a journey of self-discovery. It wasn't always easy, as I had to confront some uncomfortable truths about myself and my life. But I knew that I couldn't ignore the voice any longer. It had become too loud, too insistent, too important to ignore. I began to make changes in my life both big and small. I started to prioritize the things that truly mattered to me, and let go of the things that didn't. I took risks and tried new things, even if they scared me. And slowly but surely, my life began to transform. I found myself surrounded by people who supported and encouraged me, who saw the best in me and helped me to see it too. I discovered new passions and talents that I never knew existed within me. And most importantly, I found a sense of inner peace and fulfillment that I had never experienced before. It wasn't always smooth sailing, of course. There were moments of doubt and uncertainty, times when I wondered if I was on the right path. But every time I felt lost, the voice would guide me back to my true north. Years passed and my life continued to unfold in ways I never could have imagined. I started a business that aligned with my passions and values, and it became a huge success. I met and fell in love with the partner who shared my vision and supported my dreams. And most importantly, I found a deep sense of purpose in everything I did. Looking back on my journey, I realized that the voice was always there. Even when I didn't know it, it had been trying to guide me towards my true path all along. But I had been too distracted, too busy, too afraid to listen. Now, I make a point of listening to my inner voice every day. I meditate, journal, and take long walks in nature to connect with it. And I know that as long as I follow its guidance, I will always be on the right path. As I continued to listen to my inner voice and follow its guidance, I suddenly heard a second voice. It was louder and more commanding than the first, and it seemed to be coming from outside of me, yet still inside my head. I felt a chill run down my spine as I tried to make sense of it. This second voice was demanding and insistent urging me to do something that I didn't understand. It was as if it was trying to take over, to push me in a direction that went against everything my inner voice had been telling me. I felt torn between the two, unsure of which one to trust, but the second voice was unyielding. It grew stronger by the day, pushing me further and further outside of my comfort zone. It demanded that I take risks and make bold moves, 
even if it meant sacrificing everything I had worked so hard to achieve. At first, I resisted. I didn't want to risk everything I had built for myself, and I didn't trust this new voice. But the more I resisted, the louder it became, until it felt like it was drowning out my inner voice completely. I realized that I had a choice to make. I could continue to cling to what I knew, to what was safe and familiar, or I could take a leap of faith and follow this new voice. It was a terrifying prospect, but deep down I knew it was what I had to do. So I took a deep breath and stepped into the unknown. I quit my job, sold my possessions, and set out on a journey that would change my life forever. The voice didn't make sense to me at first. It led me down paths I never would have considered before, introduced me to people who challenged and inspired me, and pushed me to confront my deepest fears and insecurities. But as time went on, I began to see the wisdom in its guidance. I learned to trust my intuition and to let go of my need for control. I discovered new strengths and abilities that I never knew I had, and most importantly, I found a sense of joy and fulfillment that I had never experienced before. Looking back on my journey, I realized that the second voice was a necessary part of my evolution. It was the voice of my higher self, the part of me that was connected to something greater than myself. And even though it was scary and uncertain, I knew that I had to follow it, no matter where it led me. Now, I make a point of listening to both voices balancing the wisdom of my inner voice with the guidance of my higher self. And as I continue on my journey, I know that I will always be guided towards my true path, no matter what challenges lie ahead. As I continued to follow my higher self, I encountered obstacles and setbacks that tested my resolve. There were times when I wanted to give up, to retreat back to the safety of my old life. But every time I felt like quitting, the voice within me grew stronger, reminding me of why I had started this journey in the first place. Through the challenges and struggles, I discovered a deep sense of resilience and determination that I never knew I had. I learned to trust myself and my abilities, and to lean into the discomfort of the unknown. And as I continued to grow and evolve, I began to realize that my journey was about more than just my personal growth. It was about using my experiences to help others find their own path, to inspire them to follow their inner voice and their higher self. So I started sharing my story, speaking to groups and individuals about the power of intuition and the importance of following your dreams. I started a blog and wrote a book, sharing my experiences and the lessons I had learned along the way. And as I shared my message, I watched as others began to find their own inner voice and their own sense of purpose. I saw people take risks and make bold moves, stepping into the unknown with courage and conviction. And I knew that I had found my true calling, using my journey to inspire and uplift others. Now, as I reflect on my journey, I am grateful for both the gentle voice that started it all and the commanding voice that pushed me to new heights. I am grateful for the challenges and the struggles, and for the moments of joy and fulfillment that have made it all worthwhile. And most of all, I am grateful for the chance to share my story with others, to help them find their own path and their own voice. Because I know that when we all follow our inner guidance and connect with our higher selves, we can create a world that is more beautiful, more compassionate, and more fulfilling than we ever thought possible. As the third voice grew louder, I felt a sense of fear and panic rising within me. Unlike the other voices, which had felt like gentle nudges or firm directives, this voice felt like a dark cloud that was slowly engulfing me. I tried to resist it, to push it away and ignore it. But the voice only grew stronger. It seemed to be coming from every direction, a chorus of whispers that filled my mind with fear and uncertainty. I felt like I was being controlled, like some unseen force was pulling me towards something that I didn't understand. I tried to fight back, to assert my own will and resist the voice's commands, 
but it was like pushing against the brick wall. As the voice continued to grow in intensity, I realized that I couldn't do this alone. I needed help, support, guidance. I needed to reach out to others who had faced similar challenges and who could help me navigate the stark and confusing time. So I reached out to a therapist, and together we worked to unravel the complex emotions and fears that were driving the third voice. We explored the roots of my anxiety and self-doubt, and we developed strategies to cope with the overwhelming sense of powerlessness that I was experiencing through therapy and other forms of support. I gradually learned to confront and overcome the third voice. I realized that it was not a force that was outside of me, but rather a part of my own psyche that was struggling to be heard and understood. As I worked to integrate this voice into my sense of self, I found a new sense of strength and resilience. I realized that even the darkest parts of myself had something valuable to teach me, and that by facing my fears and doubts head on. I could emerge stronger and more whole than ever before. And so I continued on my journey, with all three voices still echoing within me. But now, instead of feeling like conflicting forces that were pulling me in different directions, they felt like parts of a larger whole. They were different facets of my own inner voice, each with something important to contribute. And as I learned to listen to all three voices, and to trust the wisdom of my own inner guidance, I discovered a newfound sense of peace and clarity. I realized that the most important journey we can ever take is the one that leads us back to ourselves, and that the answers we seek are always waiting within us, if only we are willing to listen. As the fourth voice emerged, I felt like I was being plunged into a nightmare. The voice was dark, sinister, and insidious like a presence that was devouring me from the inside out. I felt like I was losing control, like some relevant force was taking over my mind and body. The voice urged me to do something that I couldn't understand, something that felt wrong and dangerous. I tried to resist, to push the voice away, but it was like trying to swim against a powerful current. As the voice grew louder, I felt like I was being suffocated. It was like a heavy weight pressing down on me, crushing me with its overwhelming power. I knew that I couldn't face this voice alone. I needed help, and I needed it fast. So I reached out to a trusted friend, someone who had been through their own struggles and who I knew could offer me support and guidance. Together, we worked to understand the roots of the fourth voice. We explored my past traumas my deepest fears, and the beliefs that were holding me back. We identified the patterns of thought and behavior that were fueling the voice, and we developed strategies to break free from its grip. Through therapy, mindfulness practices, and other forms of support, I slowly began to loosen the hold that the fourth voice had over me. I learned to recognize when it was starting to emerge and to intervene before it could take over completely. I also learned to cultivate a sense of self-compassion, to be gentle and patient with myself as I worked to overcome this powerful force within me. I realized that I didn't have to face this alone, that there were people and resources available to help me through even the darkest times. And as I continued to work through the challenges posed by the fourth voice, I discovered a newfound sense of strength and resilience. I learned that even the most terrifying aspects of myself could be transformed, that even the darkest nights could eventually give way to dawn. Through it all, I continued to listen to the other voices within me, the gentle whispers of my intuition, the firm directives of my inner wisdom, and the challenging questions of my inner critic. And as I learned to integrate these voices into a larger whole, I discovered a sense of inner harmony and balance that I had never known before. In the end, I realized that all of the voices within me were ultimately reflections of my own inner truth, a truth that was vast, complex, and multifaceted but also deeply interconnected and unified. And as I learned to trust and honor this truth, 
I discovered a sense of peace and wholeness that I had never known before. As I continued to work through my inner demons, I discovered a sense of clarity and purpose that had eluded me before. I began to see how the different voices within me were connected, how they were all pointing me towards a deeper understanding of myself and the world around me. The gentle voice that had first called out to me became a guiding light showing me the way towards greater self-awareness and self-compassion. The commanding voice that had urged me to take action became a catalyst for change, pushing me towards greater courage and conviction. The menacing voice that had threatened me became a teacher, revealing to me the shadows within me that needed to be brought to light. And the terrifying voice that had consumed me became a source of transformation, showing me the depths of my own resilience and inner strength. As I integrated these different voices into a larger whole, I found myself becoming more whole and integrated as a person. I began to trust my own inner wisdom, to listen to my intuition, and to act with greater authenticity and purpose in the world. And as I did so, I discovered that I was not alone that there were others out there who were also grappling with their own inner demons, and who were searching for the same sense of wholeness and purpose that I had found. So I began to reach out to others, to share my story and my journey, and to offer support and guidance to those who were struggling with their own inner voices. And in doing so, I discovered a sense of connection and community that was deeper and more profound than anything I had ever experienced before. In the end, I realized that the different voices within me were not my enemies, but my teachers. They were all pointing me towards a deeper truth, a truth that was both within me and beyond me, a truth that was both personal and universal. And as I continued to listen to these voices, I found myself becoming more fully alive, more open, more compassionate, and more alive to the beauty and mystery of the world around me. As the fifth voice emerged, I felt a sense of fear and fascination wash over me. This voice was different from the others, it seemed to be a part of me that I had never known existed, a part that was both alluring and dangerous. It spoke to me in a way that was both persuasive and seductive, drawing me in with promises of power and pleasure. It urged me to do things that I didn't understand, things that felt both exciting and terrifying at the same time. At first, I resisted the voice, trying to push it away and ignore it. But the more I tried to resist, the more powerful it became. It seemed to be calling out to me, begging me to listen to give in to its hypnotic and overwhelming influence. As the voice grew louder and more insistent, I began to feel like I was losing control. It was as if the voice was taking over, consuming me from the inside out. But even as I felt myself being pulled deeper and deeper into the voice's thrall, I also knew that something was not right. There was a darkness and a danger to the voice that I could not ignore. A sense that if I gave in completely, I would be lost forever. And so I began to fight back, to push against the voice's seductive pull and to reclaim my own sense of agency and autonomy. It was not easy, the voice was powerful and alluring, and it seemed to know all of my deepest desires and fears. But as I stood firm and refused to give in, the voice began to lose its hold on me. It grew fainter and fainter, until it was little more than a distant echo in the back of my mind. In the end, I realized that the fifth voice was not something to be feared or avoided, but something to be understood and integrated into my larger sense of self. It was a part of me, yes, but it was not all of me. And by acknowledging and embracing all of the different voices within me, both light and dark, powerful and gentle, commanding and seductive, I could become more fully human, more fully alive. I diaresis inverted question mark one fourth. As the final voice reverberated through my mind, I felt my sanity slipping away. The pressure was unbearable, and I knew I had to do something to make it stop. I closed my eyes and tried to focus on my breathing 
but the voices only grew louder and more insistent. I felt like I was being pulled apart, torn between conflicting forces. The fifth voice, so seductive and persuasive, was tempting me with promises of power and control. The final voice, so menacing and oppressive, was urging me to give in to my darkest impulses. For a moment, I was paralyzed with indecision. But then I remembered the strength and love of those around me, and I knew what I had to do. I took a deep breath and called upon my inner reserves of courage and determination. With the fierce determination, I pushed back against the voices refusing to let them control me. The more I resisted, the weaker they became, until they finally faded away into silence. I opened my eyes to find myself surrounded by my loved ones, their faces filled with relief and concern. I knew that I had faced my demons and emerged victorious. But I also knew that the battle was far from over. The voices would always be there, lurking in the depths of my mind waiting to be unleashed once again. But I was ready to face them, armed with the knowledge that I was stronger than any voice, no matter how menacing or seductive. And with that knowledge, I felt a newfound sense of peace and strength, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. As I basked in the afterglow of the my heart fought victory, I suddenly heard a new voice in my mind. One that was different from all the others. It was soft and gentle, but it carried a weight of authority that made me sit up and take notice. Congratulations, my child. The voice said, you have proven yourself worthy of the task I have for you. I was taken aback. Who was this voice, and what task did they have for me? But before I could ask, the voice continued, you have been chosen to embark on a quest that will test your courage your wisdom, and your strength. You will face dangers beyond your imagining, but you will also discover powers within yourself that you never knew existed. I felt a shiver run down my spine. This sounded like something out of a fairy tale, but I couldn't shake the feeling that it was real. What is this quest? I asked, my heart racing with anticipation. You must journey to the ends of the earth, to a place known as the edge of the world. There, you will find a gate that leads to a realm of untold wonders and unspeakable horrors. You must pass through the gate and retrieve a powerful artifact that has been lost for centuries. Only then can you return home, a hero in the eyes of all who know you. I was both exhilarated and terrified as the prospect of such a journey, but I knew deep down that I could not turn away from this opportunity. I had faced my demons and emerged stronger than ever before, and I was ready for whatever lay ahead. As I prepared to set out on my quest, I knew that the road ahead would be long and treacherous, but I also knew that I had the strength and courage to face any challenge that came my way. And with that thought, I set out into the unknown, eager to discover what fate had in store for me.